Here's some pencil sketches of uh, some specs of a horse bit that I'm going to be custom making. And uh, that's got all the dimensions I need there. And I pencil drew around the actual bit. And from that, I, um, I'll show you what I did. I'll move that aside like that. I came in and that's two layers of poster board that I glued together and made a pencil drawing of the shank kind of the way I want it to look and the next thing I did was make this uh, pattern right here that pattern and then I torched out two uh, shank pieces like that out of a quarter inch plate steel and uh, you notice the uh, top and bottom rings on on there and I'm going to show you how I attach these and um, we'll end up with a bit something very similar to that this is going to be loose jaw um, on the corners and the mouthpiece is two and a quarter tall and it's got about an eighth inch and eighth um, in between the port and the port's hammered and then uh, um, arched back on each uh, shank, I'm going to be putting uh, this is a sterling silver overlay uh, concho that I've got roughed out. I took my circle template and um, drew a circle on my silver sheet and then roughed those out with my jeweler saw. And then now I'll uh, grind down to my line with the 80 grit belt on my 2x72 sander. So that's the plan right there. The next thing I'll do is clean the top surface off here on this uh, steel and then I'll come back and use a scribe and mark my pattern around the edge and then grind down to the line. And uh, let's see one other thing. I've got a coil of uh, one inch uh, rings right here and I need to cut those with a hacksaw. I'll just I'll, ha I'll have four rings there and I'll go ahead and heat those and flatten those and get those prepped and then we'll kind of go from there. Okay I have my silver circles prepped. They need to be domed. I've got those shaped up though and my rings are prepped. I've hammered those flat and pushed the seam together and the only other thing I like there is probably just hitting uh, that on a belt sander like a 120 grit belt right there uh, where the seam is in that area um, and then um, now I need to continue with uh, profiling the uh, shank bodies there um, I'll take a look at those Yep, there's the shank bodies right there. I've got those uh, scratched on there. I went around my pattern with uh, um, a scratch, uh, sc scratch all or scribe or whatever you would call it. So now I'm ready to grind down to my mark and I'm going to use a abrasive wheel on a bench uh, Baldor motor and I've got it a pedestal and I can I'll work down to my line fairly easy and then clean it up on a belt sander. Here's a shot of my Baldor buffer. And actually, I've got a pedestal made that I can do grinding and uh, so forth. The soft wire brush on that um, the right side there really comes in handy uh, later on for uh, buffing flux off the of silver work and so forth. But, this side here uh, I use for uh, cutting round rod and then grinding uh, down the lines uh, like I'm going to do here on this, uh, this shank here. Like right up here at the top of this shank, uh, this narrow blade on this abrasive wheel, you can really get down in there and clean that out like you need, uh, opposed to like a grinding rock or something. You can really work it and get down in there.
Okay, I get the first uh, piece profile pretty much like I want it. And I've got the second one scratched here. I think you can see my scribe mark there. Actually, I took a uh, Sharpie and blackened this uh, shank here after I cleaned it off on the belt sander. And then I clamped um, that ground shank on top of that with a vice grip. Yep, just clamped it together like that and I scribed it real deep so I can see my line on the second one here. Um, and now I'll grind down to that line. Then I'll have the pair ready. I may even clamp them together once I get this one kind of ground down to the line and I can sure enough uh, get them uh, matched up.